Today I'm going to show you how to install the basic fuzzing framework and we're going to go over the default image magic fuzzing run. So I've already downloaded the scripts.zip and the Debian fuzz.zip files and I've extracted the scripts.zip to C fuzz. And now I just need to open up the Debian fuzz image. And the first thing you want to do is take a snapshot. That way if the fuzzing VM ever gets too messed up, you can just revert and start from scratch. And then we need to go to the VM settings, options, shared folders, and then enable the shared folder on our host, which is cfuzz and has the scripts in it. So just check that box and click OK. And now we can power this on. You can ignore this message about a floppy drive and just click no. And now that it's booted up, it's going to start a fuzzing run on an old version of Image Magic, and we've got a few windows open up here. This window right here just shows the process IDs as they're started and killed. Then we have a top window, so if any processes start to use it, too many resources, you can notice that here. And we have just a normal terminal, so you can run any commands you might want to. And then right here is where all the fuzzing happens. As you can see, it's running the program over and over again, and it's detecting crashes and gathering output for those crashes, and also minimizing the crashing test cases. But this is moving past pretty fast, so we can't really focus in on it, so let's take a look at the BFF log. We'll go into the crashers folder and BFF log.txt is what we want to look at. And right off the bat here, we just set up some log files. Then we get to the rangefinder. And if you happen to use BFF 1.1, then you remember that we had to manually select a range with a minimum ratio and a maximum ratio and that would be used to tell a, the BFF how much to fuzz the seed file but with the range finder it is now automatic so we have a bunch of different ranges and we give them all a score and when we start out they all have the same score but as we fuzz the application and crashes happen in a particular range then we up the score for that range and then eventually it's going to narrow in on a specific range that is the most effective for crashing our application and then it'll use that range from then on and after that you can see eventually a crash happens and we generate a test case so we grab some standard error output Velgren output and then we start to minimize that test case. And you can see here this is all the minimizer running. And this first variable here says that 311 bits are different from the seed file and then our first minimal match is 311 bits different from the seed file. As you can see, as it goes down, it gets more and more minimized with the matching. And the target guess is set to 1, and that means we're going to guess that it's going to get down to a 1 bit difference. And then the current is 141, so that's 141 bits different than the seed file and the chance here is the current probability of reverting any given bit to the seed file value and for the the miss variable it means we've done zero attempts with the current parameters and we're going to try it ten times before we give up and increment our target guess to two bits and then this is just the total misses and then we have unique crashes so as we're fuzzing a file we're actually going to find unique crashes during the minimization. 
but we don't actually save these crashing test cases at this time. That's something for a future release. Now let's check out the output directories. So convert is the application we're fuzzing. IE.ppm is our seed file. And then we have the results folder. And each one of these folders is a unique crash. And the file folder name is the hash of the GDP backtrace. And we open up one of these folders. You can see what we save for each crash. We've just got the, the log file for that crashing test case. We have the mutated file. We have the GDB backtrace file. We have the, a minimal version of our tra crashing test case. We have the standard error output. We get the Valgrind output. And then we get the minimizer log which is the variables I showed earlier. And for the GDB output, we get a backtrace. We get a dump of the assembler code. And then we get all the registers. And one thing to note with the backtrace is if you're compiling from source, you want to make sure you compile a debug version so you get symbols or if you're fuzzing an application from the Debian repositories you want to make sure you get the debug symbols package which is usually the same name but with a dash DBG at the end and then this will give you the source file with the line number of the function that is crashing and that will help you out in your crash analysis now let's go over the config file, bff.cfg. We got a lot of variables in here to go over. Program is just the full path to whatever application you're fuzzing. In this case, it's the convert app from ImageMagick. Killproc name just needs to be the name of the process that's running. Normally, it's the same as the program. Pre-args are any arguments we're going to put before the seed file name. Post args are any arguments we're putting after the seed file name. And then here we have our seed file. And the above options are going to run convert and take the ppm file and convert it to a bitmap file. And we're going to mutate it in the process. Then we have locations for our fuzz run files. So mount hgfs is just the shared folder with our host where the scripts are. And one thing to note for output dir is this folder needs to be unique for each fuzzing VM you might have running. You might be running a campaign on different applications or different file types. So just make sure you, if you have like VM1 and VM2, just create a subdirectory so that it doesn't clobber the state files for each fuzzing campaign. And for the ZZup fuzzer parameters, it starts in LD preload mode to mangle the input and detect crashers, but some apps don't like that. So you're going to need to use copy mode, and you just set this to 1. Start seed is normally 1, but you might want to change this, say, if you ran a fuzzing campaign and you did start seed 0 through 1,000, but then you want to restart at 1,000, then you just change this to 1,000 and change your max seed to wherever you want to go. For the seed interval, in some cases you might want to bump that down a little bit to say 50. And this way when the range finder runs, it's going to use, it's going to go through 50 seeds and then switch to a new range. So that way if you're not sure which range is going to be the best, it should come across a range with a crashing test case sooner and then start to narrow in on the range that's most effective. Verify crashers is set to 1 by default. That just grabs all the output we looked at. Uh, backtrace levels is equal to 5, and that's how many backtrace levels to use to determine uniqueness for a crash. Keep duplicates is 0 by default. It's turned off, but you might want to turn this on, set it to 1. 
in a case where you're interested in one particular crash and you want all the duplicates so you could maybe find a crash with a different memory address on the access violation that might be easier to exploit. The minimize crashers is turned on by default. You're probably going to want to keep that on. If you're ever sending your crashers to a vendor, they're going to need that minimized file to troubleshoot what the specific bug is for the crash. This manual cutoff variable it has actually been deprecated, so you can just ignore that. And then we have application timeouts. So since convert is a command line program, it runs very fast. So we can keep this at one second to keep our throughput high. But if you're going to do a GUI application, you're going to need to bump this up a few seconds so the application has enough time to fully start up and parse the file before it it stopped. Kill proc timeout is just how many seconds to wait before we give up and kill the process. Then we have three seconds to capture standard error, ten seconds to capture GDB outputs. We're probably going to need to bump this up for more complex applications like OpenOffice that run really slow with a debugger attached. Um, same with the Valgren timeout, it's 30 seconds right here, but we might need to bump that up for complex applications. And then we have our watchdog timeout, which is 3600 seconds. So let's say we're starting a fuzzing campaign over the weekend, and we're not going to check until Monday, but for whatever reason, fuzzing stops Friday night. If this temp fuzzing file is not touched in 3600 seconds, then it's going to reboot the entire VM and should start where we left off. So that way you don't waste the entire week and not fuzzing. And that wraps it up for this video. We hope you find the BFF useful. Thanks for watching.